All right, this is Tech Math 1. We're looking at chapter 13 in the blue book. Um, and that is graphing systems of linear equations. So that's a real fancy way of saying, finding out where two lines cross. Find the point of intersection of two lines. A system of linear equations just means multiple lines and you're finding out where they cross on the um, Cartesian plane. So, in algebra you may have done this and then you had to do it by hand. Um, because we're in tech math, we get to use our handy dandy calculators, which make it a little easier. So we're gonna go y is equal to, you see the little y sub one popped up there? And we're gonna put in two, the number two, and then that's the variable button right there, x. So it says y equals two x, and then you're gonna hit enter. And when I hit enter, it bops it down to y sub two. Now, before we find y sub two, look at what they did. They don't have it solved out for y real nice, do they? So we add x to both sides, and now we got this. y is equal to x plus two, okay? So let's put that in. We're back here on our calculator. y is equal to x plus two. And then we're gonna hit enter, and now it pops down to y sub three. We're not gonna put in a y sub three. So now we wanna hit the graph button. Graph, and there's one line, and there's the other line. So here, I'll graph those up on here for you. So this one I'll do in blue. That one starts at positive two. Remember, if you wanted to do it by hand instead of using your calculator, you totally could. The slope is the thing in front of the x. So that's one over one. That's the slope of one, one over one. And the starting point on the y-axis is two. That's zero comma two. This number is always where it starts on the y-axis. The number in front of the x is always kind of the directions or the slope. And so there's two up one and over one. There's my other point. And then I draw that line in. This one is a little weird because the starting point is zero, zero. It's the origin. So here, I'll do that one in black. You can't really see red or green well through the camera. So I'll do it in black. So the slope is two over one. That's the thing in front of the X. And the intercept is B equals zero because it's not a line there. So that's zero comma zero. So it starts at the origin and we go up one, two, and over one. And then we go up one, two again, and over one. And then we plot those points there. And so this is the point of intersection right there. I think it's at two comma three. Let's see. Is it two comma three? No. Two, if I put in two, that's four, so that ain't it. Oh, maybe it's in between those two. So look, it might be kind of a jerky one, not a perfect crossing point. So if we wanted this to find the point of intersection, you want it to calculate. See how it says calc right there, calc? So that's the yellow, second, and then trace is calculate. And now look at number five, it is intersect. So you go down to intersect, and then you hit enter. And now it says, hey, is this the first curve? And you say, yes, enter. And then it says, wait, is this the second curve? And it's clicked on the other line. And then you say, yes, enter. And then it says, you wanna take a guess? And if you want, you can play around and put the little dot, you know, click right or left and put the dot close to it and then hit enter. If you basically hit enter, it'll just figure it out anyway. So it happens at two comma four, two comma four. Oh, so my drawing, my blue drawing is off. This one is supposed to be up there a little more. Oof, I'm a bad drawer. So two comma four is the point of intersection. And that definitely works there, two comma four. And if you put um, four in for that, minus two in for X, that is two. So two comma four. So just my blue line, I should have went up one and over one, up one and over one, and then I would have been at two comma four. I just drew the blue line kind of awful. All right. Okay. So that is solving 
systems of linear equations graphically. And now, if you look at number five in the book, they, they have an XY chart. If you wanted to fill that in, you could plug and chug, you could pick values for X and put them in and figure out Y. Or what you can do is you can also hit second, and then on the top, you see how it says table right there in yellow? So table. And now look, there's X, there's X1, Y1, and X1, Y2. So you could say 0, 0, and 0, 2, and, you know, put all your points down that way if you want to. Okay. Okay, so let's go on to um, 3.2, the addition method. So that's 3.1 graph graphically, and we've got a graphing calculator, so it does all the really heavy lifting for us on that. Let's go to 3.2. This is doing it algebraically, and now it's with, they're calling it the addition method. I've also seen this called elimination in some books, and sometimes it's called linear combinations. Um, but at the end of the day, let's jump to number 12 and do this one. So we've got 2x plus y equals 10, and we've got 2x minus y equals 6. And basically they want us to find out where do those two lines cross. And then they gave us a second one, p minus 4q equals 16, and p plus 4q equals 0. Okay, so let's find out where these lines cross. Now, you'll note on both of these, given they have opposites. Look, this is positive 3, and that's, or that's positive 1y, and that's negative 1y. That's negative 4q, that's positive 4q. That often doesn't play out that way, where it's nice and neat like that, where you'll have opposites in both of your linear equations. But if it does happen that way, what you can do is you add them together, and that eliminates one of the variables. So the reason we can't solve this without graphing is because there's two variables in it. But if I can use both of these um, equations, and get it down to a single variable, well then I can solve. We're all about that. So we add straight down, we get 4x, we add straight down, the y's die, we add straight down, we get 16, and then the equals comes down also. So now you're solving 4x equals 16, divide by four, and x is equal to four. So that is the x coordinate, but we also need the y coordinate. Remember, x, y is where they cross. So no problem, now you take that and you put it into either equation. We'll put it into the top one, looks a tiny bit easier. So two times four plus y equal to 10, and now you go back to your sweet algebra solving skills here. Eight plus y equals 10, subtract eight from both sides, y is equal to two. So that is the point of intersection. So we found out where two lines cross without even graphing the lines. We just did it algebraically. Okay, uh, same dog, different fleas, um, 2p, the q's die, add straight down, 16. So I got 2p is equal to 16. I divide both sides by 2 to get 1p equals 8. And then you take that 8 and put it back into the bottom one looks a little easier. Not tons easier, but a little. Minus 8, 4q is equal to negative 8 divide by 4, and q is equal to negative 2. And your book doesn't make this mistake. A lot of math books make this mistake, where they tell students, well, label it as a coordinate, meaning they want you to say, when you have x and y, you could totally say 4, 2. When you have b and q, you can't really label it as an x, y, because which one's supposed to be x and which one's supposed to be y? There's no rhyme or reason that you would go alphabetical order, necessarily. So they would have to tell you if they want. Other books often don't tell you that, but they say leave it as a coordinate. But if they get cute and change out the x and y, well then you have to um, you have to just leave it p equals eight and q equals negative two. You can't really 
label it as X and Y, unless there's a key given which one represents the X value and which one represents the Y value. Okay? But your book doesn't do that, so yay for your book. Let's take a look at 13.3. That is using this addition method, but when it isn't so pretty, when they don't necessarily just have an opposite right next to it. So let's try to solve the system at the right by eliminating x. So we're looking at number 16 in the blue book in chapter 13, okay? And so we got 4x plus y equals 1, and we got 2x plus 3y equals 13. And so they said, okay, okay, we want you to eliminate x. So you look at it and you go, well, this is a 4x and this is a 2x. So if I was going to eliminate x, I would leave this one alone and leave in that 4x plus y. But this one, I want the x's to go away. So I got to put on my thinking cap and think about, okay, it's 2x right now, but I need it to be negative 4x. That's what I need to happen. I'm going on a vision quest where that 2x is going to somehow magically turn into a negative 4x. And so we already got the x part. We just have to multiply that by negative 2. Because negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. But I can't just multiply one term in an equation by a negative 2. I have to hit that and that and that. Both sides of the equation get multiplied by negative 2. So the 3y, even though I didn't really need to change that, it's going to change to negative 6y. And the 13, I didn't really need to change that, but I'm going to change it by multiplying by negative 2 and get negative 26. Because in order to get that to be negative 4, we had to multiply everything by negative 2. Okay? Now it's set up just like the last problem was where you add straight down, the x's in this case die, we got 1y minus 6y, that's negative 5y, we got positive 1 and negative 26, that's negative 25, we divide both sides by negative 5, we get y equals 5, and after you find one answer, you take that answer and sub it into the easier of the two, I think this top one is easier, so 4x plus, instead of y, we'll put a 5 there, equals 1, and then get rid of the 5, and divide by 4. And there we have it, okay? All right. Uh, let's do one more problem, number 24. So they're giving us two sets of equation by eliminating either letter and then solve the system. Okay, so let's take a look. Two more practice problems here on that one problem on number um, 24. So let's take a look at that. We got 2p plus 5q is equal to 9. We got 3p minus 2q is equal to 4. And then on this one, we got 3x plus 4y is equal to 6. And we got 2x plus 3y is equal to 5. Oof. So neither one of these are really easy peasy. Um, so you got to decide what do I want to get rid of. So if you want to get rid of the x's, that's fine. But now you have to think, what does 2 go into that 3 goes into? So then that would be 6. So I need a 6, a positive 6 and a negative 6. If I decided to get rid of the Q's, well then 5 and 2, they both go into 10. So I'd need a positive 10 and a negative 10. It does not really matter in either one of these which you decide to eliminate. It's about the same amount of work regardless of which variable you decide to get rid of. So... I'm going to get rid of the P on this one, which means I want a 6P on that one and a negative 6P on this one so that the P's go away. So now I have to think. you got to kind of work backwards. So you've got 2P here, but I want it to be 6P. 
So I'm going to multiply that by 3. 3 times 2p is 6p, but then I also had to hit that with a 3 and that with a 3. So all of them get the 3 plus 15q, that's sort of like collateral damage, and equals to 27. Again, I didn't need either one of those to change, but it had to change because I needed this 6, okay? This one I need a negative 6p, so that is positive 3p, so if I multiply by negative 2, but then I got to hit this with a negative 2 and that with a negative 2. So that's plus 4q, and that is negative 8. And now I add straight down, the p's die, I get 19q is equal to 19. And then I divide by 19, and I get a nice answer, q equals 1. And then I take that 1 and I put it into the easier, uh, both of them are pretty tough. I'll go into this one, 3p minus 2 times 1 is equal to 4. So I replaced the q in this equation with the 1. That again gets it down to a single variable. So 3p minus 2 is equal to 4. Add 2 to both sides. 3p is equal to 6. Divide by 3, p is equal to 2. Okay. Same dog, different fleas. We'll get, uh, let's go 6, um, yeah, let's go 6x and negative 6x again. It worked on the last one. It'll work on this one too. Uh, I gotta multiply everything here by 2. And make sure you get all the numbers. So plus 8y and equals 12. I have to hit all of these with a negative 3. And so that's negative 9y and negative 15. And you add straight down and I end up getting negative 1y is equal to negative 3. So divide by negative 1, y is equal to 3. If y equals 3, you pop it back into either equation. I'll go into the bottom one. 2x plus 9 equals 5 minus 9. Um, so if the question is popping into your head, well, what if I popped it into the top one? You're still good. You'll still get the exact same answer. You'll get negative 2 regardless of which one you sub it in. If I go back in there, 3... Uh, that's 12. I move it over. It's negative 6. 3x equals negative 6. Divide by 3. It's negative 2. So you'll get the same answer regardless of which one you sub it back into. Try to pick the easier of the two. Okay. So that was 13.3. That is it for 13.1, 13.2, and 13.3.